Coming to you from the Psychologist and the TV, I'm Dr. Blessing and Tamu, and I'm really excited to be out here with you today. How have you been? I hope you've been good. Uh, today, I want to tell you a little story about a certain lady I'm going to call Ime. Now, Ime is uh, a lady who came to a gender-based violence center. Often, she came with cases of assault. And when we tried to find out who had assaulted her, Ime wasn't coherent. She couldn't give you details. She couldn't tell you who it is that had assaulted her. But she always told stories of men who picked her up to satisfy their sexual urges, usually uh, under an agreement that she will satisfy them and they will pay her, the sex worker. And after having satisfied them, instead of paying her, instead of meeting their own part of the bargain, they would assault her. One time she came with a terribly swollen eye, a black eye, another time with a swollen arm. And this went on and on and on. And uh, we later went on to discover that Ime was mentally ill and we actually helped her assess psychiatric care. The, uh, an area of mental illnesses and actually it is quite affordable, aff affordable, you know, uh, assessing mental care. Uh, opposed to what people think. So today I'm going to be talking to us about mental health. Recently we've had that phrase, you know, uh, thrown here and there, and because of the context in which some people have used the phrase, it got me wondering if they actually understood what mental health was all about. I have uh, an unsolicited visitor. Um. No, wait. Joel, say hello. Hello. Yes, so see you. I go see. on, go on and meet grandma. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye. So we're discussing mental health on the uh, three major subtopics. The first one is what is mental health. The second one is uh, conditions or factors that lead to mental health disruptions. And then the third one is how to take care of your mental health. Now, if you're new to the Psychologist NGTV, by now you know it's always an interesting and educative time right here on the Psychologist NGTV. Please click on subscribe button to subscribe to this channel. And we come to you from time to time with very interesting and educative uh, content. So let's go right on. What is mental health? Mental health is a state of psychological, social, and emotional well-being in which an individual is able to mobilize both his internal and external resources in responding to the demands of everyday life, in living a normal life, and also in contributing uh, meaningfully to his society. Now, some people have described mental health as the absence of mental illnesses. Yes, yeah, so generally, if an individual is able to live a normal life, function normally, is able to mobilize both his internal and external resources, in responding to the demands of the environment, demands of everyday life, then you see that person is mentally healthy. Remember, we mentioned that is a state of both social, uh, psychological, and emotional well-being. Now, World Health Organization has recognized that mental health plays a major role, a very significant role in us being able to achieve our global developmental goals. And so recently, mental health has been included in the sustainable development goals. And according to the World Health Report also, mental illnesses like uh, depression is one of the major causes of disability. As a matter of fact, our mental health is as important as our physical health. But many people make the error of taking care of their physical health and ignoring their mental health. So like we said, Depression leads to disability. As a matter of fact, depression leads to uh, other physical sicknesses like stroke, like heart disease and diabetes. And the link is not hard to find, you know, because depression in some individuals manifests in change in eating habits, you know, so they eat more than they will usually eat. It changes in their social interaction habits. They don't want to go out anymore. You know, they just uh, withdraw and stay indoors and inactive. And also it leads to changing, changes in their sleeping habits. So they sleep more. So somebody, imagine someone is not eating, is eating more than he should usually eat. 
is sleeping all through the day and is not active, is not going out, is withdrawn from society. Definitely, some of these sicknesses like obesity, um, diabetes, and the others will set in. So that's how far mental illnesses uh, can affect our physical health. And also, suicide happens to be one of the leading causes of death between 15 and 29 year olds, and this is according to World Health Organization report as well. So you can see that being in a, a good state of mental health is very vital so what are some of the factors that can lead to mental health disruptions there are actually a number of them we're going to mention a few now one of the factors that can lead to mental health disruptions is continuous social and economic pressures and when it comes to social pressure this is the age for it with the social media uh, aid, if I may say, and all of the social media activities, people are under a lot more pressure to conform to standards, you know, that have been set by society. Now, normal human beings, middle class individuals, uh, low income individuals, uh, living normal lives are now trying to meet up standards of uh, celebrities who have and who earn a much higher income, you know, because they see this celebrity lifestyle on social media and they kind of want to replicate it at their own peril. So people are under a lot of social pressures. If it is in Africa here, we where we have the standard family system, you know, uh, one member of the family has a birthday party or another member of the family has a wedding or there's a burial ceremony and each of those come with their own demands, both socially and economically. Okay, you know, so we have this system where uh, people sew, uh, buy a particular fabric, sew a particular pattern within the family, and you have to keep buying these fabrics. You want to belong to society. You don't want to be seen as not meeting up with the standards. And so people are under a lot of social pressure in these times particularly. Talk about economic pressures and this is really the time, you know, uh, with the economic breakdown, especially uh, in our country, Nigeria, at this time and all around the world, you know. So people never have enough money, you know, to meet their needs. And that also puts a lot of pressure on people and that's, that uh, it can lead to uh, disruptions in their mental health. Now, another thing that can lead to disruption in our mental health, talking about uh, social pressures, work overload. Now, if you're working in a place where you always have deadlines, deadlines to meet, and you always under a lot of pressure to deliver, you know, you have, um, uh, what do they call it? Like in the banks, you have um, a limit of the amount of money you, you should bring in and all of that, a lot of pressure. When you have work overload or you have a lot of pressure at your workplace, that could also predispose you to mental illnesses now also suffering from a long-term debilitating illness such as cancer or AIDS can also lead to mental illness can predispose you to mental illness now trauma is another factor that can lead to mental health disruptions so where you have just suffered from trauma or maybe you suffered from trauma somewhere in your past maybe in your childhood or something it can dispose you to um, uh, mental health disruptions, talking about post-traumatic stress disorder and other disorders as well. So these are some factors. Another one is genetics. So some of us have genes that uh, can make us more susceptible to mental illnesses. Now, having a genetic predisposition to mental illnesses does not mean you will suffer from mental illnesses. There are other factors, you know, that would come into play. Your lifestyle, your habits, whether you have a good social support system, whether you're, you have a, a good um, uh, house to live in, a good job, all of this play a role. So just because you have a genetic predisposition for mental illness does not mean you suffer from a mental illness. And there are also other people who have no genetic predisposition disposition for mental illnesses that could suffer from mental illnesses yeah other factors that can lead to mental health disruptions that are worthy of mention are being a caregiver now either you're caring for a family member maybe an elderly family member or a sick family member usually caregivers are at risk for mental illnesses because you know they go through a lot and do not even realize it until they've used up all of their resources and they're stressed Okay, another one are some biological factors like chemical imbalances. When we have hormonal imbalances or neurotransmitter imbalances, that could lead to mental health disruptions. Another factor is the taking in of psychoactive drugs. 
And I'm sure you can refer to previous videos for uh, information on depression, uh, earlier mentioned, and also psychoactive drugs. Now, when we take psychoactive drugs like alcohol, like marijuana, like, um, uh, mention them, cannabis, like nicotine, all of these psychoactive drugs predispose us to mental illnesses. So please take care of health by avoiding psychoactive drugs. And also feelings of loneliness and inadequacy can also lead to mental health disruptions. Now enough of factors that lead to mental health disruptions. How can we take care of our mental health? Remember, our mental health will break down where we have inadequate resources to deal with the demands of every. One of the ways to take care of your mental health is actually to take care of yourself. And what do I mean by this? It means that you should eat well, eat healthy. There's a saying that you are what you eat. So when you eat healthy and you are at the topmost physical health, your mental health will also do well. So eat well, rest well, sleep adequately. Adequate sleep impacts very much on our mental health. A lot of us deprive ourselves of sleep. And when you deprive yourself of sleep, you are actually, um, it's going to take a toll on your mental health with time. So try to eat well, try to rest when you need rest and try to sleep well. That's one way to take care of your mental health. Another thing you can do to take care of your mental health is to talk about your feelings. Now, talking about your feelings is not a sign of weakness. It's actually a, a sign of prioritizing your mental health. So however you feel, there must be someone you can talk to about how you feel. Don't bottle up your feelings because when you bottle up your feelings, one day they will explode and that could become a mental illness. One other way to take care of your mental health is by exercising good old exercise. I wonder why we are not exercising more. It seems to take care of a lot of things, you know, all for our good because when we exercise, endorphins are being released. The good feel good hormone make us feel good, make us feel better and preserves our mental health. So we should be exercising. And the least you can do is to be active. Working as I say is the best form of exercise. Take at least let's say 1000 steps every day. Do some walking, you know, walk around the house, just be active. Just be active actually and exercise does a lot for our mental health. Talking about exercise, why don't you exercise your limbs, your hands by clicking on that subscribe button. I mean, what are you waiting for? Just click on and there you go. Subscribe to the YouTube channel and you always find something interesting and educative on this channel. Now, other ways to take care of your mental health is this. You should take a break when you know that you're getting, uh, you know, you're not able to cope again, either with work, with whatever it is, just take a break from time to time. It might be a one hour break. It might be a few minutes break. It can be a break, a weekend out somewhere. It can be a vacation. Take a break when you know that things are getting out of hand and the pressure is getting too much on you. And what better way to take care of yourself and take care of your mental health. Now, one other thing you need to do to keep your mental health at the optimum level is to avoid psychoactive drugs. We can't say that enough, right? Avoid psychoactive drugs. Yeah, another thing you need to do to take care of your mental health is to have a social support network. No man is an island, remember? You can do life all alone. You should have family that care about you, that you care about. You should have friends that check up on you, that come to visit, that you can sit out with. Just have a good social support network. People with a good social support network are at less risk of mental illnesses. Okay, and also doing something to make people happy. Altruism. Doing something to make people happy, you know, doing something good for other people, helping other people is a very good way to help you feel good about yourself. That's a good feeling that's associated with helping people. So learn to do something for other people. Learn to help other people smile. Do something to make other people's life better. That will also make you feel good and it will improve your mental health. Another thing you can do to keep your mental health in, in, in check at an optimum level is accepting yourself for who you are. It's not everything about us that we determine. It's not everything about us that we can change. You know, you can change the family we're born into, for instance, and you did nothing to be born. You, you, you did not influence the choice of the family from which you came. Uh, so what am I trying to say? Accept yourself for who you are. 
Try to change the things that you can change, but what you cannot change, please learn to live with it. Okay, uh, having said that, we also need to reduce the social pressure on ourselves. We are the one letting the social pressure get to us. For God's sake, you aren't Beyonce. You aren't uh, Kim Kardashian. Stop fighting too hard to have that perfect makeup all the time. Uh, perfect this and perfect that. They leave off those things. So they spend a lot of money trying to look the way they look because that's their business. If it's not your business, why spend so much time and energy and money trying to look a certain way, trying to put up an appearance and it weighs down seriously on your psychological well-being. You know, this is everybody wants to have a very fabulous uh, 50th birthday party. 50 is golden, is worth celebrating, but celebrate it the way you can. I mean, it will be beautiful. However you celebrate it, you don't have to meet up to that very high standard. Everybody wants to have a, a pre-marital wedding shoot that is uh, uh, out of out of this world, you know? We are trying to live up to standards that are beyond us and it is killing us. Please do not put that pressure on yourself. Live within your means, accept who you are and be true to yourself, be self-aware, know who you are. You can't afford to do all of these things because you don't have the resources. You're not living off them. It's not your business. You know, so how why will you spend so much money for something that's not bringing in income? Reduce the social pressure on yourself. Uh, choose the right uh, type of friends because when you have the right type of friends, it also helps. So your choices also matter. So let's try to keep our mental health in check this year. Another way to help your mental health is to do something you're good at. When you do something you're good at, it makes you happy. And happiness improves your mental health, okay? It also boosts your self-esteem. So do what you're good at. Do something that makes you happy. Yeah, you can also learn to play musical instruments. You could learn a game. Uh, you could learn some uh, dancing, you know? Something like that. This kind of activities boost our... Uh, uh, psychological well-being. So you can learn something new that you've always wanted to learn uh, and all of this, listen to good music. Uh, that also helps to, to stabilize our, our, our mental health to take our ease of stress. You know, stress is at the heart of mental illnesses because stress is when uh, there are demands on our bodies that we do not have the capacity to meet and so there's a breakdown somewhere. So you don't want to deal with that. So whatever you would do to reduce stress on yourself, uh, whatever you do to keep your mental health at optimum level, please do so. I'd like to mention one thing. Now, taking care of your mental health does not include um, trampling on the rights of other people. You can't take care of your mental health at the expense of another person's mental health. Because I've had people who have borrowed money from people and when they come calling them to pay back, they ignore their calls, they refuse to pay back and they say, I'm trying to take care of my mental health. That's not it. You can't take care of your mental health by destroying another person's mental health. On the long run, that's going to impact on you negatively. I've heard people who have not uh, lived up to responsibilities. They have not fulfilled their responsibilities. And when you ask them, they say they're trying to take care of their mental health. They've treated people like trash. You ask them, they say, it's my mental health I'm preserving. Yeah, it's okay to cut off some people. It's okay, you know, to do what's good for your health. But emotional intelligence, which is a subject we're going to be discussing pretty soon, uh, uh, demands that whilst you take care of your emotions and you're conscious of your emotions and you're of your mental health, you're also conscious of the mental health of the people around you. So you preserve your mental health, not at the expense of another person's mental health. You consider yourself, you consider others, and you try to live in a pattern in a way that is good for everyone. I hope I'm talking to someone today. Let's take care of each other. Let's be there for each other. Let's take care of our mental health. Let's do the things we love to do. Let's eat well, sleep well, rest well, and please click on the subscribe button to subscribe to the Psychologist NG TV. It's been a wonderful time here with you. Please follow me on Instagram at the Psychologist NG. Follow me on Twitter at the Psychologist NG. And I would love to know what you think. I would love to hear your suggestions about taking care of mental health. I would love to hear your experiences about mental health. Please leave all those in the comment section. And please like this video. Give me that support. I would love it. Uh, from me to you, have a beautiful day out there. Bye.